ようこそ我がベルベットルームへお初にお目にかかりますここは夢と現実精神と物質の狭間にある場所今からあなたはこのベルベットルームのお客人だ。Welcome everyone to our 14th episode of Taki Soba with our review of the Persona 3 films. I'm your anime casual Nate, here with my friend the anime lover Malesh. Hello all! These films are based on the Persona 3 game made by Atlas. Me and Nate both dearly love those games, and so we were really excited to see how those films were going to turn out. Persona 3 was originally a Japanese role playing game released in 2006 for the PlayStation 2. It's been quite a while since then, so I was surprised to see Persona 3 getting a movie adaptation, with the first film being released in 2013 and the final film in 2016. With four films at 90 minutes each, it's almost the same length as one TV season of anime. The story behind Persona 3 revolves around a group of high school students who discover a mysterious 25th hour that has come into existence, wherein shadow creatures roam the earth and take out any human beings who are unfortunate enough to remain conscious during this dark hour. Our primary characters have discovered they can summon powerful beings from within them, known as personas, and these are based on real world mythology. The persona users will traverse mystical dungeons in order to take down powerful shadows and restore peace. The story is adapted well from the game, but the game is part visual novel, and forming social bonds with these characters is crucial in giving strength to your personas. In the film, most of the visual novel parts are almost completely cut out or replaced with silent montages. So, in game weeks are condensed to fit a 60 plus hour game into a 6 hour film series. Having four movies around 90 minutes each did make the pacing flow quite nicely. Each film dealt with important parts from the game, and each had new characters that would become important later on. The story itself is full of intrigue, as you really want to know why this brand new hour of the day exists. Furthermore, the nice pacing of the show answers a lot of questions you may have. So, whenever you're watching something, you're not gonna feel like it's pointless. Ultimately, the story concludes rather nicely, providing enough closure for me. As a side note, the ending is actually more ambiguous than the film. Two major things happen that are more obvious in the game than the film, but the game actually adds an epilogue, which explains everything perfectly. I'll just say this there's a chance you might just completely misinterpret the ending, so just to be safe, I'll put a link in the description for the game's epilogue cutscenes in video form. Since the ending gets some ambiguity, It was unfortunate to see the epilogue getting cut from the film. Personally, I just like the epilogue story element, but I can see how to quench a fan's thirst for a better ending. Our main character is a mellow and mysterious transfer student known as Makoto Yuki, who is actually the player character in the game. Since the game has a lot of dialogue options, the protagonist can be molded to fit the player's personality, so it's interesting to see the film's interpretation of the character. Makoto takes on a leadership role and remains the most calm and collected throughout the most dramatic and strenuous parts of the film. All of his teammates and himself are united by experiencing great loss, and it gives them all something to fight for. In the game, many additional characters can be interacted and bonded with that give great insight and perspective. But for the sake of the film, many of them were omitted, and only some made very brief cameos. These characters are pretty good in the game, but at least the primary characters were brought over pretty well in the film's interpretation. Makoto and his teammates call themselves C's, and they include two second years, Yukari and Junpei, as long as some third years, Shinji, Mitsuru, and Akihiko. Lastly, the group has some really odd members as well, including a dog, a robot, and a middle schooler. Their personalities range from the total bro like Junpei to the confident executive type like Mitsuru. The main cast gets the bulk of the character development, and like Nate said before, death is what brings them all together. It was amazing seeing them overcome all these tragic events, making them stronger than ever. For the villains, we have a group called Strega, whose main goal is to keep the Dark Hour going on forever. The group commits numerous crimes during the Dark Hour and even enjoy using the personas. Strega, for the most part, was an interesting group of villains that certainly did some really bad things to cease. But I do wish some members of Strega got some better development. The animation from these gorgeous films is provided by AIC and A1 Pictures, with AIC only doing the first film. AIC also animated the Persona 4 anime 
and Botan did a great job of showcasing the game's visuals and art styles in anime form. A1 did a fantastic job with the latter three Persona 3 films, because you really did feel like you were on the Persona 3 road. The animation and the fight scenes were amazing to witness and flowed nicely. I second that. It was truly amazing to see all the Shadow and Persona designs portrayed with 2D animation. The game did have some anime video cutscenes, but of course, nothing on the scale and production value of these films. Both studios knocked it out of the park with amazing cinematography and atmosphere, and they really hold up with the high standards of quality set by Atlas. Now we'll discuss the equally amazing soundtrack. The Persona 3 films share a lot of the soundtrack with the game, which is great because it's one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time. Some of the most memorable tracks from the game are given new arrangements in the films, really enhancing the cinematic experience. Additionally, many new tracks were composed for these films, and they fit right in with the eccentric Persona 3 style. Persona series easily has some of my favorite video game soundtracks, so being able to hear some of the songs from Persona 3 and the films was really fantastic. There were also new themes for each individual movie that fit in very nicely. In particular, I really love the first movie's theme, More Than One Heart. Another great thing from the Persona series is its great English voice acting. However, these films never got the dub, which did hinder my enjoyment quite a bit. The Japanese voice actors were good, but there were some Japanese voices that I just didn't think fed the character as well as their English counterparts did. I completely agree it's a shame that these films have no English dub, because one of the games is truly top tier. However, all the Japanese actors from the game do reprise their roles in the film, which is great in principle, but here in the West, Persona 3 does not even have a Japanese voice option selected, so fans over here won't be familiar with these voices at all. Nonetheless, their performances were quite good, and I really enjoyed them, even after being used to the English dub, which says a lot for me. Personally, I've never seen an anime produced as a series of films, so watching anime in 90 minute blocks is pretty great. There were no artificial cliffhangers to bother me, and the pacing is pretty good considering just how much they had to cut. I mostly understood why they had to cut what they did, but since my bias for the game is so strong, I encourage everyone to play the games on PS2 or PS3 if you are a fan of RPGs in just the slightest. If you aren't into RPGs, I think this is still a good standalone story that will intrigue you if you want to witness amazing battles featuring mythical beings, powerful monsters, magical spells, and a great cast of main characters. The Persona 3 films did a great job of realizing what a special game Persona 3 was to me. While there are some characters I would have loved to see in the films, I understand why they were ultimately omitted. Overall, if you enjoyed playing through the games, I would totally recommend checking out the films. But you should play the game first before watching the films so you can enjoy the films more. Unfortunately, you can't easily watch the Persona 3 movies here in the West because they cannot be streamed and the Blu-rays are very expensive or sometimes just sold out. If your moral compass is flexible, you can just find illicit websites to stream these films quite easily. As always, if you've already watched the Persona 3 films, or actually just played the game, you can still click the first link in our description for a post-review discussion, which includes spoilers. Thanks for watching our review of the Persona 3 films. Please give it a like or comment for feedback. We'll see you guys next time with the review of the anime Michiko and Hachin. Ciao, ciao.